they're, they were built, but they're getting better and better every week. It's, it's, uh, it's truly a blessing uh, that we have such a great praise team in our church. Who's so dedicated. Amen? Amen. Amen. Okay, let's all stand up for the Word of God. Today we're going to be reading from the book of Jonah. We're just going to read four verses. Jonah chapter 4, verses 1 through 4. We'll read it together really slowly, okay? But to Jonah this seemed very wrong, and he became angry. He prayed to the Lord. Isn't this what I said, Lord, when I was still at home? That is why I prayed to first all by fleeing to Tarshish. I knew that you are a gracious and compassionate God, slow to anger and abounding in love, a God who relents from sending calamity. Now, Lord, take away my life, for it is better for me to die than to live. But the Lord replies, Is it right for you to be angry? All right, let's sit down. How many of you know the story of Jonah? Let me see your hand. How many of you know the story of Jonah? The story of Jonah. I keep it up. The story of Jonah is really famous, right? Even the non-believers know the story of Jonah. Because they say, hey, that, that can't be true. A whale swallowed up a guy and throw him back up, you know? So, let's think about the story of Jonah. God directs Jonah to go to Nineveh and preach the message of repentance. And Jonah, go over there and preach. Jonah, what does he do? God said, go over here. Jonah says, he turns the other way and he gets on a ship. And he goes the opposite direction. And then the ship gets into a big storm. And they say, what's going on? What, what's up with the storm? Who sins against God? And Jonah said, hey, you know what? Just throw me overboard and you guys will be okay. So they threw him overboard. Big fish came and swallowed him. And then there was calm. Right? And then... Inside the belly of the huge fish, Jonah cries out to the Lord. It's in chapter 2, verses 7 through 9. It says this, When my life was ebbing away, I remembered you, Lord, and my prayer rose to you, to your holy temple. Those who cling to woodless idols turn away from God's love for them. But I, with shouts of grateful praise, will sacrifice to you what I have vowed I will make good. I will say, salvation comes from the Lord. So in the belly of this huge fish, Jonah repents. And says what? I will make good on my vow. I'm a prophet, right? So what is a prophet supposed to do? He's supposed to declare the word of God. God gives the word. My job as a prophet is to tell that. He didn't do it. He repented and he said, what? Salvation belongs to the Lord. I'm in this situation. I'm in this fish. I'm about to die inside of a fish. That's pretty bad. Way to go. And he said, what? My salvation belongs to you. You could save me. And then what does God do? He makes the big fish peto, right? Peto. What's it? Vomit him up unto the land. Then, the word of God came to Jonah the second time. This time, Jonah obeys and goes to Nineveh and preaches the message of repentance. And then the king and the citizens of Nineveh repents and God relents from destroying that city. And then comes today's verse. Chapter 4, verses 1 through 4. And the Jonah said this, but to Jonah, this seemed very wrong. When God told Jonah to go preach, why did Jonah run away? Anybody? Why did Jonah run away? 
God said, preach over here. Do not make the other way. Because he didn't want to preach that message to that city. Why didn't he want to preach to that city? Because Jonah didn't want, want those people to repent. Jonah wanted those people to get judged. Jonah wanted the anger of God to just wipe them away. You know, we're living in America and we don't know what it kind of feels like. But I, like my Harabudi generation, you know, when they were like occupation under the Japanese rule and they were really, really oppressing Koreans. You know, people, most of the Koreans really hated them because they oppressed us. They tortured you. They took away your language, they took away your culture, and they just said, you're going to do everything my way, I'm going to kill you. And if you didn't obey, they tortured you like you don't even imagine. But these people of Nineveh, these are the kingdom of Syria. They were really, really cruel to their enemies. I mean, they were known for being very violent. These people were very, very cruel, especially to cities who rebelled against them. I mean, torturing them, skinning them alive. I mean, we're talking some serious, cruel activity. And Jonah knew this. And Jonah said, you know what, those guys, they deserve to die. They don't deserve repentance. God, don't have mercy on those people. God, you're telling me to go over there and you want me to preach so they can repent? No way. I'm not going to do that. So he went. Because what? He thought that was wrong. To Jonah, God's grace and compassion seem to be injustice, unfairness. God, it's not fair for you to save them. It's fair for you to utterly destroy them. They torture other people. God, why don't you just torture those people? Why don't you just rip them rip limbs apart and just, just kill them? But Jonah had a double standard. When he was rebelling against God, when he was in disobedience, when he was in a sin, what do you do? He repented. That God, to you belongs the salvation. Salvation belongs to you. Save me. When somebody else said, what did Jonah say? Those guys don't deserve forgiveness. Jonah is thankful that God forgave him for his sin. But he's angry at God for forgiving people of Nineveh. This is a classic case of double standard. Forgive me, don't forgive him. Where did Jonah go wrong? What was Jonah's problem? The first sin of the whole humanity is what? The first sin is what? Anybody, what's the first sin of humanity? Yeah, Adam and Eve eating the what? The tree of knowledge of good and evil, right? Now, here's the thing. How did Satan come and tempt them and say, you know what? You can be gods of yourself. You can be like God. Don't be content with just being creatures of God. You can be God. You can determine for yourself what is right and what's wrong. What is good and what's bad. Jonah's biggest problem was that he wanted to play God. When God revealed his will, instead of trusting God to, to be right and following his will, Jonah determined for himself that God's will was wrong. It wasn't right. Jonah 
became the judge of God. Jonah said, God, you know what? I'm looking at this situation and you're wrong. I'm right. He decided that God was wrong and refused to follow God's wrong direction. He wanted to determine what was right and wrong for himself. And when he did this, what happened to him? He ran away from God. He became angry. And then he wanted to die. How about you guys? Do you guys judge God sometimes? You see things around you. God that doesn't seem right. You know, some of the things you say in the Bible, God, I think that's wrong. The way you handle your business, I would have done it that way if I was you. How many of you think you know better than your parents? Do you think you know better than your parents now that you're getting really older? <laughs> no? James, now you're, since you graduated from Stanford and you're in master's program, <laughs> you think you know better than your parents now? No. No? Are you sure? <laughs> okay. Is our parents perfect? No, far from it, right? Sometimes they say stuff, they do stuff, they get angry when they shouldn't get angry, and they get mad at us when they shouldn't be mad at us. They have double standards. There's all these problems. But none of us really think that, hey, I know better than my parents. They just don't know what time of the day it is. You know? We may think, hey, my parents are not perfect, but I don't think anybody's really thinking, you know what? I know better than my mom and dad. Forget the, all of the experience that they had with all of the, 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 the days that they lived. Forget all of the education that they received. Forget all of the experience they had with all their living. Forget that they raised me and made me who I am. I know better than my mom and dad. I don't think there's anybody like that. But then there are a lot of people who think, I know better than God. God is so much bigger than our parents. We don't say, we don't dare say, I know better than my mom and dad. But a lot of us sometimes think, hey, I know better than God. <coughs> God says to do something and we become sometimes rebellious. Why that way? Why that particular way? Why not any other way? I don't like that way. What am I really saying? It's not that I have a problem with that particular way. If I have a problem with that particular way that God had, but there's a particular way, let's say, Jimin tells me, hey, this is the best way. Why that particular way? Or my teacher, James, or Chuyang, or Daniel says, this, do it this way. Why that particular way? What I'm actually saying is, no, I want it done my way. I don't want it done God's way. Not that particular way. My particular way is where I think is right. Jonah says something that is totally stupid. He goes, to Jonah, God seemed wrong. Now understand if Jonah wasn't a Christian, I would understand that maybe. But Jonah was a prophet of God. He knew that God was the Almighty God. God knows, he knows that God made all of this. He made me. He loved me more than my parents. He loved me more than anyone in this ever universe could ever love me. And he knows all of that. And he says, What? God, you're wrong. This is beyond stupidity for me. Because to think that I know better than God. What I want to talk to you today in my message today is don't fool yourself to thinking that you know better than God. 
we may not blatantly say, I know better than God. But sometimes when you look to yourself, you look in the mirror, you kind of remember what you said, what your action was, what your intent was, what your thought was. It is the same error that Jonah makes sometimes. I feel that I know better than God. That I know better than my youth pastor. I know better than my pastor. I know better than my parents. You may know better than me. You may know better than your parents actually, but you will not know more than, better than God. That's for sure. I want all of us to remember that and humble ourselves. You know, we, how many years have you lived? Some of these teachers are twice your age, right? Did they live in those ages in vain? What I mean is, did they, did they just play games for 20 years? I mean, do they just play basketball for 20 years? No, they lived their life just like you. They went to school, they did their chores, they went through experience, they had boyfriend, girlfriends, and they experienced life, they, they were hurt, they realized things. Especially you, you. You are at a very, very gentle age where you are blooming like a flower. I don't want this darkness of that. I don't want you to have that burden of, oh, God is wrong. Things are not right. Because what happened when that happens? Jonah, first thing he ran away from God. You're going to eventually run away from God. If you think you know better than God, you're going to turn and run over. Number two, what happened? He became angry. You're going to find yourself become a very angry person. What? What did you say? You become in your face kind of a guy. And number three, Jonah desires to die. Oh, this life is meaningless. Yesterday at our revival meeting, what did Barnaby said? Uh, there was how many million? High school kids, California, 17 or something, 1.7, and he said 1.1 national high school kids attempted suicide. That almost, that's almost like every single high schooler in California. I mean, I didn't know that. When you say God is wrong and you try to say, I know better than anybody else, the problem is when you look at your life, you know so well, but your life seems so miserable. Something's wrong. You run, away, you run away from God, you become lonely. And then you become angry. And you just say, what's the meaning of this? I know none of you are contemplating suicide. Hopefully. But if you are, if you're feeling no, angry, if you're feeling that you want to be away from God, if you're feeling alone, Maybe your relationship with God is not right right now. So let's all close our eyes. I want you to think about your relationship with God. Did I ever recently have any doubts about God being right? That I knew, that I know better than God. Am I guilty of being conceited? being proud that I know better I pray that at this moment that you would repent just like Jonah did in the belly and say God salvation belongs to you salvation only comes from you you're the only only true God who could ever save me forgive me for thinking that I knew better when I don't and thank you for loving me, even though I was in this state. And always waiting for me with your arms open. Wanting me to come back to you, Lord. And I'm here, and I repent. And I want to feel your presence in my heart. It's not enough, unless you come.
It's not enough. This world is not enough unless you come. There's nothing in this world that will be enough unless I have you. And I pray that all of us will have the same confession. Forgive our sin. Help us to commit to serving you with all of our hearts, mind, and soul. We pray all these things in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen.